First thing you're going to want to do to uh, start working with TensorFlow on Google Cloud is to get a Gmail account. This will be your Google account in general. They're free to create. Um, now you go to cloud.google.com, click try it free. You'll see the $300 credit on the right. Just accept the terms. Corporations are people now, so this is sort of an ambiguous question, but I said I was an individual. Just fill out the rest of this form, then uh, add a uh, credit or debit card. Um, you can use a bank account as well. So then you're going to want to go to the dashboard of your newly minted uh, Google Cloud account. You can click on the left, there's the little three bar thing. Go down to Compute Engine, click that. Your uh, VM instances aren't available yet, but they will be shortly. So we'll just wait for that. You can hit Create. So I'll name it Ubuntu. 16.04, that's the version of Ubuntu. It's going to have four CPUs. I'm going to change this from Debian to Ubuntu, because that's a slightly friendlier distribution of Linux. I'm going to allow HTTP traffic, and then create. When you see that green checkbox, your uh, VM is ready. Go ahead and click the SSH button and you'll get a pop-up warning. Go ahead and tell your browser to allow pop-ups. Then re-click the SSH button and now you've got this SSH prompt. So first we're going to sudo apt get update. Then install python pip. Then we're going to sudo pip install TensorFlow, and sudo apt-get install IPython, which is going to let us access this through something other than a command prompt. Then go sudo pip install Jupyter with a Y. Before we can access IPython in a browser window, we're going to have to open the relevant port. So click your uh, the name of your instance in the VM Instances tab, and then go down to Network, click Default. We're going to add a firewall rule. I'm going to just name it Jupyter, because that's the type of notebook we're using. Allow from any source. I'm going to open port 8888 by typing TCP colon 8888 semicolon UDP colon 8888. Now we're going to want to make a clone of the TensorFlow Git repository. Uh, and then we're going to want to change our current directory to the deep green directory in the cloned Git repository. Now we can use the command sudo Jupyter notebook hyphen hyphen IP space 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 space hyphen hyphen port space 8888. The reason we can't just use the Jupyter notebook command alone is because we are not on the computer that is running Python. We are accessing it remotely, and so we have to open up a port to the rest of the web that we can then access from the computer that we're currently at through a browser. Now what you're going to want to do is copy your computer's current external IP address, which could change when you restart your computer or turn it off for some length of time. Sometimes Google will give you a new one, so you can check that, copy it, paste it in uh, your... Uh, paste it in your URL box, and then copy everything after the 0, .0, .0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 um, in the URL that you're given. When you combine these, you'll be able to access your instance remotely, and anyone else you give that link to will also be able to access it. But I wouldn't post the link publicly, because in a Jupyter Notebook you can run regular bash commands. And, of course, since it's run with sudo, 
your sudo, you'll, uh, you're at risk of someone running commands on your computer as a super user. You'll have to click the Deep Dream notebook file. First thing you'll want to do is uh, run your imports. So that's a separate box. So you just click click in it so your cursor's in there and then hit Shift Enter. You can see that I'm getting an import error the first time I run this. It's asking for a module named PIL. P -I -L. That's actually uh, got to be added. Uh, you can use you can install it using pip. So if you just go sudo pip install pillow, you'll have you'll no longer get this error. And I just did that. So we'll run that. Looks like it runs clean. This just downloads the ImageNet Inception graph. And then in order we can shift click through each of these sections. There are little explanations of what each of them do. This uses TensorBoard to show the shape of the graph. Now, uh, as you can see, we're starting to get some visuals. This notebook explains in some detail how each of the uh, aspects of the Deep Dream algorithm are implemented. Eventually we get to visual representations of channels. So this is the flower channel. If we change this to different numbers, we end up with different features getting represented. So this is 65 and it looks like houses. Try 22. And it ends up looking like uh, yarn, something that's been knit. Try 21. A lot of these, it's hard to even describe what they are. This one looks sort of like fish eyes, maybe a little bit of reptile or amphibian in there. This one's pretty abstract. This uh, has got some architectural aspects. Try 100. And we're back to fish eyes. That actually looks like fish now, 101. Try 102. 102 look like fish tails. Now 102, 102 in this uh, lower level layer, so or uh, that the channel 102 in a lower layer creates a much simpler visual. So this one's for mixing layers, and if you do 66 and 139, 139 is the flower channel, and so you can mix those two channels you'll end up with sort of a fairy village 67 and 139 produces a sort of abstract flower plot looks like Disney old Disney now we can move on to deep dreaming an actual image they have a uh, this Pilatus image we can grab our own offline so open up another SSH window so the other one can stay running we'll find an image from the Rocky Mountains something pretty and colorful there we go that looks nice and then we type wget and then the URL as you can see the uh, image shows up now in the directory the uh, MV or move command is also the rename command in Linux. So we're going to rename this something simpler. If you type RMNP and then you just hit tab, it'll continue the name for you and it'll put the uh, their, uh, it'll put the backslashes in where they're required. So spaces in file names 
Linux can handle it, but we'll just get rid of that. We're going to rename it as RMNP. So the way you do that is you type MV space capital RMN, which is the first three letters of the file name that was downloaded, and then hit tab, and it should continue the rest of the file name. It's got some backslashes here behind, for example, the parentheses. And that's because parentheses typically have another meaning in bash, but a backslash before something allows you to use that thing by itself. So backslash means whatever follows. Don't interpret it as a part of a command, but just interpret it as the character as part of some file name. So it allows you to put spaces in and refer to things like that. Now we're going to want to resize the image. I used image magic sudo apt-get install image magic and then you use the modify command and now you can deep dream the image you can also run a single channel on it so this is the flower channel run on the image And then this is uh, this channel 110 running the image. Just make sure you completely stop your VM instance when you're done so that you aren't paying for it. And you're golden. My next video will be about using the uh, GPU to run Magenta and generate music like this.